Hello class, my name is Fola Sun, and this is my artist report for Art M100. The art movement my two artists is associated with is called Mannerism, also known as the Late Renaissance. This Italian Mannerism period is between the High Renaissance period and the Baroque period. According to an online article, these works typically feature active figure groups set in a forward plane to maximize an effect of formal monumentality and narrative intensity. The figures are shown in dynamic twisting or foreshortened poses reminiscent of contemporary mannerist painting, but typically have more mass and energy and lack the courtly elegance of, for example, Pormigianino or Francesco Salviati. Okay, so my first artist of this period is an Italian painter named Tintoretto, whose full name from birth is Jacopo Comi, sometimes changed to Jacopo Robusti. Tintoretto is his adopted nickname, meaning the little dryer. The image above is his self-portrait, who was born in Venice the year 1519 and lived to the age of 75. His father, Giovanni Battista Robusti, was a cloth dryer in Venice. He has artworks influenced by central Italian mannerism. Tintoretto was known as a great Venetian artist from the Venetian school. He was different than other Venetian artists of the 16th century, such as Titian. Although Tintoretto practiced as an independent painter, he gained the master. The Italian painter Titian was Tintoretto's master for a short time because Titian ejected or expelled Tintoretto from his workshop. Later on, Tintoretto joined Giorgio Vasari's Accademia del Disegno, Academy of Design. Even there, his works were criticized by Vasari and other artists. Vasari opined, worked in a fashion of his own and contrary to the use of other painters. Some critics have argued that his work is better understood as mannerist or even as Proto, proto borough He embodies his geographical traditions of art, known as Venetian art, but more distinguishable than other Venetian artists in his time. And speaking of his work, let's dive right into it. This is one of Jacopo Tintoretto's artworks, called The Miracle of the Slave, and is also known as The Miracle of St. Mark. Jason Farrago, an art critic of the New York Times newspaper called A Whirlwind Tour of Tintoretto's Works, describes this painting. Nearly 18 feet across, this epic tableau pictures the gleaming Saint Mark, patron saint of Venice, plunging headfirst from the sky to free a naked slave punished for worshipping him. A massive crowd of bystanders, their bodies are brawny wads of orange, olive, and blue, cranes to see the disentangled victim who lies knocked out on the ground. St. Mark can be seen on the top right, casting light throughout the painting. This art piece emphasizes Tintoretto's fast productivity of which he produces his pieces, which is the main technique he widely uses when making artworks. The brushstrokes are rapid in quick successions, and by looking at the figure in armor to the left of the painting, you can see how Tintoretto's quick brushstrokes create a sort of glimmer and the perspective of light being absorbed into the armor. Jason Farrago from the New York Times newspaper also states that he painted a few great mythological scenes and several acute portraits of old bearded men, but at his core, Tintoretto was a religious artist, far more so than Titian and Berlioz. This is true as a lot of his artworks depict a higher power from above raining down golden light, so to speak. The painting to the left is a portrait of a procurator by Tintoretto. The painting to the right is called the Dario Lorenzo Saranzo, created through oil on a canvas. Here is, a more, here is more of Tintoretto's portraits. On the left is the portrait of Vincenzo Zeno, and on the right is a portrait of an elderly man with a white beard. Both portraits are a reference to what Jacob Brago said about Tintoretto's several cute portraits of old bearded men. This art piece is called The Miracle of the Loaves and Fishes. 
It contains religious features and an insistent off-centered perspective reflects Tintoretto's concern to make his painting respond to its intended location. Okay, so bouncing back on how some of Tintoretto's late Renaissance artworks following the movement of mannerism depicts a higher power from above or just casting a gold light that spreads throughout the art piece. The use of light conveys religious and symbolic meanings. For example, the art piece above is one of Tintoretto's most known, called The Last Supper. You can see rays of light leaving the light source, and some of the characters in the piece are glowing or have a golden aura surrounding their bodies. This could symbolize religious ideas. The use of light and dark in this art piece is amazing. You can really see the powerful differences of the two. The art piece is also a great example of late Renaissance artwork. Tintoretto's rapid productivity is also shown in this piece through signs of unsecure brushstrokes in their characters' illuminated clothes. Jacopo Tintoretto was influenced and inspired by the High Renaissance movement and then even the Baroque movement that came after late Renaissance. He was inspired by El Greco, Jacopo Bassano, and Hans Rottenhammer. Overall, he was very influential to artists during the 17th century and is known as one of the greatest Venetian artists of the 16th century. And don't forget too that he was taught and influenced by Titian. Tintoretto's painting above is called Crucifixion and shows the characters with dynamic foreshortened poses and light flowing throughout the painting. My second artist is Luca Longhi. Luca Longhi was an Italian artist during the late Renaissance movement too. Luca Longhi lived up to 73 years of age. Unfor unfortunately, there is no self-portrait of the artist. Luca was a Ravenna painter. He had a daughter named Barbara Longhi and a son named Francesco Longhi, and they both learned and assisted their father in his workshop. The painting above is one of Luca's portraits called Portrait of Pope Paul III, Alessandro Farnese. Luca Longhi has many religious artworks. The painting above is one of the examples called Virgin and Throne with Child, Saints, John the Baptist, Lucy, Roque, and Nicholas of Tolentino. Here we have another religious painting by Luca Longhi. This art piece of Luca's shows the characteristics of late Renaissance work. The characters had the dynamic twisting poses. This piece is also religious. And this is a painting Luca created with his daughter, Barbara, called Madonna con Bambino. Because they work together, Luca has many artworks with his children. Barbara Longhi is also a known artist like her father. This is also another of his artworks. Okay, Luca Longhi could have been influenced by his children, Barbara and Francesco Longhi, as he taught them both and did artworks together, such as his painting above, created by Luca, Barbara, and Francesco. He was influenced by Baldassar Carrari, Francesco Zaganelli, and Niccolo Rodinelli. In his earlier works, such as The Marriage of St. Catherine. Okay, Luca also learned and was influenced by mainstream painters such as Giorgio Vasari. The painting above is called The Circumcision. Tintoretto and Luca Longhi have many things in common pertaining to their artwork. Both have the same manners art style, such as the figure's poses and use of light to create space, giving off a strong sense. Both Tintoretto and Luca Longhi have many religious artworks. Both use different mediums. They have different mediums, and Luca Longhi is more of a portrait painter than Tintoretto. Overall, both are well-known artists of the 16th century and the late Renaissance mannerism movement. This is, these are questions I made for my presentation, and for my work cited. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you.